I spent over 15 years working for the world's largest financial companies, um, to name some BlackRock and Deloitte. Whilst working there, I was responsible of advising clients on how to take the money they have today, put it to work by investing it so that they can achieve financial freedom. Since then, I've now t embarked on this mission to actually build Dovu so we can not just give institution clients but retail clients the opportunity to take the money that they've worked so hard for, invest it so they can also achieve financial freedom. I spent the last 20 years of my career uh, building financial services companies and offering financial advice both on the African continent and in the Middle East. I got together at Radica back in 2020 uh, to create this wonderful company called Ndovu that enables every single individual on the African continent as well as the African diaspora to easily and affordably invest in financial markets. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Elephant in the Room podcast. As usual, I'm your host, the chief thinker, Ro Nyangeri, co-founder, chief commercial officer of Ndovu. I am joined by my able co-host once again, the lovely... Radhika Bachu, the super striker of the team, the most in-person player in the team. Sorry, Ro, what's your role again? No. <laughs> I'm just a guy. You're just the chief thinker. <laughs> small, small thing that I do. Just think about stuff, right? Radhika, it's a lovely, lovely day. I mean... It's super cold though, this Nairobi of ours. I know. Who knew yeah. global warming would affect Kenya? It's a global coldie. <laughs> <laughs> Colding so indeed. Old. Yeah. Now, last time we had a chat, we were talking about time. I, I have been an investor for, for quite a while and I'd like to take you on a little journey. Please you you do. made me close my eyes and, and dream about this scenario. <laughs> I'm going to take you back, right? I can't uh, wait to hear it. <laughs> no, it's full yeah. of interesting stories, There are many stories, yeah. <laughs> I'm an old soul. Yeah. Um, the, the time that I started investing way back in the 90s, right? Locally. Uh, the experience, the experience was different then. Mm -hmm. Like extremely different. Uh, I remember when I, I told you about the, the KQ, the Kenya Airways purchase. Yeah. When I was exchanging banter with, with my dad around this, I was actually in Shags. We were up country, and my granddad was there as well. And Papa Rogito, <laughs> the big boss, the man himself. And we we had to to leave the county because we want to participate in this IPO. Okay, we had to leave the county, come to the capital city Nairobi. Right, yep, well. walk into a broker's office, fill all this paperwork, all these things, you know. And and tell me how long your KYC took back then. Ay, way. <laughs> <laughs> back then, yes. it was so insane that someone actually visited you in the house. So you're applying, you're sitting, I live in house number 345, Avenue ABC. Someone will actually come physically when they had time. Wow. They'll actually come and confirm, ah, okay, it's this dude and they're going to invest. Wow. All right? Now, we did not have things like Swift back then. No, right? no. There are no checks or very in the early days in this country. Yeah. ATMs were a fad. Like, oh, there's an ATM from this bank. Right? It's a different age completely, yeah. right? So we actually had to withdraw money physically. <laughs> wow. <laughs> take it I'm over, tired already. <laughs> deposit it. <laughs> take a slip and take it to the broker and say, hey, I want to participate in this. Okay. All right? That was a different time. Right. It We're focusing was. again on time here. It definitely yeah? was. Super manual. All the technology or lack thereof was, yeah. was glaring, right? Yeah. But here we are. We're in an age where tech is becoming super cheap. 100%. Uh, we, we have telcos or internet companies uh, bringing more Africans online every mm -hmm. single day. Uh, cost of data has come down. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, I'm an old soul. What we used to pay for data in like 2000. <laughs> You're definitely an old soul, but we're definitely learning, so yeah, go ahead. It's not, it's not what we are seeing right now, no. okay? So I think just beyond the, the aspect of time that you touched on, your, your focus on time should be time in the market rather than time in the market. This is the second aspect to it, that this is the perfect time yeah. uh, to actually start investing because... Uh, stuff around demographics, stuff around uh, tech. There's an entire change that has occurred in, in the economy and society that favors you to actually become an investor right now. Yeah. Case in point, uh, we no longer need 
to go to the bank withdraw money and bank it somewhere else we have mobile money you yeah. can actually uh, do that quickly online banking there's online banking you can transfer yeah. whether it's swift or pesa link or rtgs whichever version of of a money transfer that exists you can actually use it yeah uh, you can use cards now i mean yeah Way back when I started Visa was not even in this country. <laughs> <laughs> That's really showing your age, bro. Really showing it. When is the right time for you actually to 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 get into the market? So I like to probe you a bit further on this. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. So I guess for those who haven't listened to the last episode, I recommend you go back and have a listen. I think um, the one key thing we want everyone to take away is that when it comes to investing, it's not about timing the market, it's about time spent in the market. So how long do you spend in a market in order for it to make a meaningful impact on the money or kronas you have invested so we'll take a step back and um the way we like to see the stock market the stock market is a place where you can actually buy pieces of companies is as human progress so if companies continue to innovate build sell buy the stock market is likely to continue to grow upwards towards a positive way And the reality is that because the population around the world is moving out of poverty, becoming the low income individual is now having more opportunities because of the internet, yeah. having side hustles, more information is available, they're able to earn more and move into a middle income bracket, which means naturally your consumption ability goes up. So, that middle the low income person now can actually afford a smartphone. They can actually buy a laptop for their children. um and as a result of that the market continues to grow and what a lot of people do with time they think about when it comes to time when should i start yeah. i don't have enough money no the reality is that now would be the best time for you to invest because the value is and i'm going to repeat it again is it's not about timing the market so you can make a quick buck it's how long you spend in the market that really is going to drive your real value and like everything in life you know creating a financial plan takes time pun intended <laughs> takes time see what you did there uh-huh yeah. uh-huh um but also it is hard work that leads you to the goals and if you get that into your mind and think about investing as getting rich in a steady responsible way you won't be um you will be successful honestly you really will but if you're looking for a quick get rich quick scheme that is a completely incorrect strategy when it comes to investing and that's when actually a lot of people lose money so let's if we go back to the 2008 recession everyone is really familiar with that um there were people that when the market crashed the people at the bottom of the graph when markets were down actually sold yeah. and they missed out on of 10 years of great growth that we've just experienced and so when it comes to market just remember it's the time spent in the market versus timing the market but right. why is that important and the reality is that like i mentioned there's the eighth wonder of the world uh this time i'll get it right <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah. there's eight wonder in the world and that's called compounding interest and compounding interest simply means that if your money sits in an investment that is continuously growing yeah. the interest that you're earning from day 1 will also continue to grow with the returns you experience over time and that's honestly the most magical thing just imagine this you are at home I'm imagining yeah yeah, yeah keep going yeah. and you get a salary and you've put it in your investment account and you said ah oh, now i can chill i've been working hard for my money and you yeah. wake up 3 4 day 3 uh, 4 years into the your um investing journey and yes. you realize it's tripled be the happiest fellow on the planet exactly yes. so whilst you were sleeping your money was working hard for you and but it but this concept only works if you're being disciplined with yourself and you're actually investing regularly and you're investing for the long term because like i mentioned yes there's some opportunities to get rich quick great you can have a portfolio in your savings that does that yeah. but your main majority of your savings should be about the time that you spend in the market by investing responsibly through funds so the key takeaway i'm actually getting here is how long you're spending in that pool you know right. it's the it's the time in the market Correct. rather than the timing like you're dipping at all let me get out yes. it doesn't work for you it doesn't right? especially for retail investors right we don't have the right skill set to dip our toes in and out how do we know a company is going to continue to go up or no a company's going to come down at this particular point in time you don't 
Yeah. Why are you trying to time the market? The people who time the market as retail investors who are not professionals are the ones who lose money and then they go back saying, I tried my hands at investing and I can't do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're meant to be investing for the long term, not just timing particular opportunities. And you could get lucky. I'm not saying you you don't. There are multiple people who don't have the skill set who get lucky and share the story like, dude, did you see I made a 200% on this in trade. three days. Yeah. 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 No, no, it's too good to be true and it's it's gambling essentially. And just remember with gambling the house always wins. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, over time, again, time. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've seen uh the movement of markets. Uh people talk about the upside or the downside. What what's your take? What's your take on this? So yeah. it seems like the market is a roller coaster. It is. It yeah. is. And actually, uh, you know, you know, pandemic time. So what happened with the pandemic was everyone thought the markets would crash. They initially crashed and they came back up and that's because it was something that no pundit in the world could have pundit are guys who predict what's going to happen to the market. So nobody had priced it in because how can anyone know we're going to go into a pandemic? Yes. It hasn't happened since 1918. 1917, 18, yeah. yeah after the war. After the war, it yeah. hasn't happened since. So the risk of this happening couldn't have been on anyone's radar. And as a result, you know, there was a down and if you came in at that point which thankfully I did, my brother-in-law did, your portfolios right now even though the markets have come back down again are doing really well because there were so many people sitting at home and they had time to think about their finances the pandemic brought to light like can they really sustain the lifestyle lifestyle they have given they've lost their jobs so people took their savings and put them in the stock market and as a result of that obviously the markets recovered very quickly yeah um but now we're going through a really interesting time so different things affect markets like the UK Ukraine Russia war um you know inflation is a little bit at the high but these things tend to happen Correct, right yeah. so we this is not the first time inflation has been high this is not the first time we've gone into war and as a result of that yes market pricing goes up and down and right now we're in a in a position where we're at currently at the low a lot of people need to train themselves to see that if the market has come down and you truly believe investing is for the long term this is actually an opportunity to buy not to panic and sell everything is at a discount at this particular point everything's at a discount yeah, you know yeah. so you and i know like if we just take a sector for example the healthcare sector it's an industry that will continue to grow right yeah. people are going to need healthcare services medicines are going to be uh, developed there'll be lots of distribution of different types of medical research etc that sector will continue to grow now would be a great time to buy that sector right our healthcare fund on dovu allows you to do that and you're buying at a discount because we know over time that's going to be consumed significantly yeah and so the point that i'm making is that when it comes to the stock market yes there's ups yes there's downs but what you need to remember is that when you're investing you're investing for the long term so the in between noise i eat what's happening right now yes. is seen as a buying opportunity and in the same way if the markets go really high and you're happy with that you can also cash out and take some of the returns and use it on you know maybe buying real estate or looking at different ways to improve your lifestyle do an mba improve your skill set but the idea is that when it comes to the market it has to be the time spent in the market and the noise that you see on a regular basis shouldn't be what you should be focusing on yeah and that leads to a better investor Um and just to close that. So there are two types of investing. One is active investing, one is passive. Passive investing is where you buy the entire market and you do that through a fund. That's simply based on the concept of your buying into the market for a long period of time. Right. These individuals over the last 100 years have outperformed active markets which are when ro goes into market and says aha i think bitcoin is doing really well <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm going to buy at the peak of bitcoin and then i'm going to buy at 60k 60k yeah. and then now it's crashed to like 34 yeah or whatever it is right now it changes so often i can't remember those type of investors over the 100 year period have actually lost money in comparison to somebody just going in and buying the overall market yeah And the idea about buying the overall market and I'm going to mention this again is time. You need to train yourself to be saving and investing for your long-term goals and you do that by getting into the market now. So the passivity it's 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 super interesting because when someone thinks passive it means like oh you're just laid back not doing anything. <laughs> But when in financial services terms uh passive is actually 
a sweet word here. It is. Right? You're, you're avoiding all the headaches of trying to look at which talk, what is Sundar Pichai thinking at Alphabet, yeah. what are the guys Microsoft thinking here, you're just riding out the market. Right? So, so super, super, super interesting. So if you had 10,000 shillings today, yeah. what would you buy? Well, super interesting. I mean, first and foremost, what I need to, to find out, I need to... F- discover what type of investor I am in the first place. I agree, right? yeah. I'd have my own theories. Oh, I want to do X. I put money into it. It pursues a certain way. I'm like, no, I did not want that. Yeah. Right? So the first thing you actually need to do before you deploy this 10,000 is find out what type of investor uh, you are. And on Dover, we offer a channel, a very simple uh, questionnaire. Do I want to use the word questionnaire? Yeah, you could do it. A wizard. A wizard. Okay, in some parts of Kenya, that has a negative connotation. <laughs> when you say wizard. So a questionnaire. <laughs> There's a questionnaire. Yeah. Uh, you come on, you uh, answer about seven, eight questions. Then it takes you back to investor profile. What we touched on in the first podcast. Are you conservative, balanced, or aggressive investor? Where you fall determines where you're actually going to take this money. So I'm super conservative, uh, I don't want to take any risk with my money. I want this 10000 to always be there. Yep. Where I'm actually going to invest this money is not going to be a pure equity fund where yeah. it goes up and down, right? Yeah. I'll put it into something uh, that's more like uh, a money market fund, mm-hmm. right? And if the money market fund is sort of diversified, when I talk about diversification, is we are spreading it amongst many things. So here we spread it between the Kenya shilling yep. and the US dollar. Right? Why not? So there's this nice money market fund. Uh, it will keep the capital that you actually invested. But that's how I will invest my 10,000 to, to answer your question. That's oh, why I put my 10,000 bob. Yeah. Because we've seen the Kenya shilling as well, usually. Yes. Over the last 24 months. Yes. Okay? So if you had gone in, say you had bought uh, a dollar fund at 105, 104. Right now, it's about 122. If you just exit, let's say. You'd make money. Theoretically, if you exit now, yeah. You've made money. You've made money. You've actually made money. Yeah. yeah. But I would like you to stay in that fund for longer. Yeah, yeah because... It's not about short-term It's gains. not about short-term yeah. gains, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, for a conservative investor, you would definitely put it in a money market fund, Correct. which I think makes absolute sense. Any guidance if somebody's a bit younger and they want, they want to earn a little bit more on their money, what would you do in that scenario? Well... You're younger, you, you have time works in your favor. It does. Time works in your favor in terms of you can take more risk. Yeah. You can be creative, mm-hmm. right? In terms of the sectors that you explore. The younger guy I'll actually uh, nudge them or urge them to put some money into an equity fund. Okay. Makes sense, yeah. But a smart equity fund. Correct. It's not just oh, I'm tossing money into uh, this random fund over here. Yeah. You'd rather buy an entire market. Yes. Okay. In five years, if you just do 15%, so if you do 15% growth for five years, you've actually doubled the you've value doubled. of your portfolio. Yeah. Now imagine you're doing 17% over the next 10, 15 years simply because you went in, uh, bought in a broader market and bought a broader index. I mean... You can't go wrong. <sighs> I should be 19 now. I'm I like, know. Oh, stuff I could do. <laughs> I know. So if you're 19 and you're listening to this, and you're going to be joining the workforce very soon, make sure you start investing, even if it's literally 5,000 shillings a month, because it really moves the dial in the long term. And that's why now is definitely the best time to do it. You can do it from the comfort of your home. Uh, we, you know, we give you access to global markets. You know, we consume everything that's global: our laptops, our phones. Uh, you know, we watch TV, Netflix, Netflix, yes, Showmax. It's all global, yeah. and you can actually partake in the industry and grow with it as you're spending and buying that. You're also investing and owning some of it, so you're leading to more of an ownership. And now we make it so easy, and you can do it just straight through your phone. Yeah, you're yeah. essentially. Investing in your own lifestyle, if you think about Actually, it. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you are. Yeah. And then, Ro, so yeah. you've told me about a 19-year-old. Take a little bit more risk because you've got a bit more time. Absolutely. Um, tell me about, say if I'm in my mid-30s, and I hope I don't give my cha- uh, my age away. Don't say anything, yes. Yeah. yeah. Where would you recommend that you invest? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would recommend I invest. Yeah. Okay? So there are a number of things, uh, especially when you're in this particular age that we're focusing on. I remember the words of a New York poet called Biggie Smalls. <laughs> so Make no money. money. More <laughs> Make yeah. money. No money, more problems. Yeah. <laughs> so you do stuff, all these responsibilities come along and there's something we definitely cannot ignore here is level of indebtedness. Yeah. Uh, 
amongst our brothers and sisters you know there's only so much that you earn but you have an exponential set of needs that that actually have to be met yeah. okay so speaking as a 30 year old yeah uh the first thing i would do <laughs> before actually deploying any money is look at my personal balance sheet i'll actually check in terms of how much money am i making every single month right from whichever channel i'm making money from from that i have to deduct the debts or whatever i owe be it mobile money yep. be it uh the banks and something called black tax as well <laughs> there's, there's a tax in there we'll yeah. talk about black tax when we do the financial planning episode for sure so you have to check do your own balance sheet by this i mean your net worth yeah your all the income that is coming in and the assets that you own deduct all the liabilities now with the amount of money that is left over this is why you actually need to be very smart yeah okay with a net amount uh do a self check what what is super important what is a frivolity yeah what can be reduced yeah then you decide you know what i i have this money i am keen on improving my my financial future i i know i am a balanced investor i know the type of investment that actually should be going in mm-hmm. start channeling money into it but more importantly beyond just starting is a discipline many guys start they are uh, I put in 5000. Yeah. I'm going to put another in 2027. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work. You need discipline. You do. Right? Do it. Commit to it. Right? Yeah. Much like you would uh commit to uh completing Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, you, like, you want to watch the next episode. Solid solid yeah. series. <laughs> you need to do the same stuff. Yeah. With your cash, right? Yeah. The sort of investments you'll go into in your mid late 30s grantel will be slightly different from what you do at 19 yeah but what's important is you've actually started on it and you're committed to it yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that even if you're in your mid 30s it's not too late it's not too late no. i mean you'd be in a better position if you started when you were 20 i wish i did but you're not it's never too late and what this investing allows you to do is that in the future it allows you to manage your own time because it lets you become financially independent And what is all our goals? Like no one wants to work for Elon Musk for the rest of our life. No Absolutely one wants to not. work for anyone for the rest of your life. You want to be the owner of your own time. Yes. And so this is the greatest gift you could give yourself in your mid 30s. If you just simply started investing responsibly, I would personally build my portfolio to have uh, the S&P 500, which is a blue chip fund. Yep. I would then put some towards gold because it's always great to have a bit of a diversifier um and a bit of real estate and a few other like healthcare or technology fund is how I would build my portfolio at 35. Wow, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for sports. Right. What? So I'll replace yeah. <laughs> I would Tell me what you would hold. Your gold yeah. with with a sports fund. I like that. Yeah. So And all my babies together. But do you see what I mean? Investing yeah. can be fun. Yes. It doesn't have to be the boring old passive is boring. Yeah. You are passionate about sports. I'm passionate about blockchain. I can actually invest in everything I've said plus blockchain and it makes it more interesting because I'm reading and learning more about the blockchain space. Yeah. I've got some money at stake. You know, I'm investing, it's making a difference. Okay, I like this. So investing can be a lot more fun than yes. you think it is. Now beyond the fun. Yeah. Uh, over the weekend as at a wedding. Mm. Good friend of mine got married. Okay. Fourth wife. Muslim guy, he's done his woo woo. religious duty. <laughs> he's got the fourth wife, yeah. right? what opportunities exist on dove for a newly married couple so the newly married couple is yeah. very lucky because all the money they would have been given as gift money okay. should actually go investing in sharia compliant funds which are halal funds which okay. is the halal fund on our platform all right now what that simply means is that you know as the muslim community um they have certain criteria they things that they cannot cannot do as a result of their culture and we're quite inclusive in that sense because we do recognize that there is a big gap in the market not just here but globally even this space globally hasn't been developed as much True. Yeah. but it is now on the rise and people are thinking more and more about sharia compliant investing um the bonds in that space are also known as sukuk which Correct. i learned the other day yeah, yeah. and um you know we're learning and developing that significantly and what we found and and like your friend there are not that many places for them to actually invest their money and they know they need to invest because sitting in the bank account your money is losing 
value, right? That they, thing called inflation. That, that thing called, yeah, uh-huh, yes, uh-huh. yes. So that not so friendly friend of ours, inflation, is a reality, and we're not thinking about it. We're not being smart with our money if it's in a bank account. So actually, through Dover, you can get access to the halal fund. And what that allows uh, Muslims, br- our brothers and sisters to do is actually invest in a fund that is not investing in things that do- don't meet their religious beliefs. And so that's things like investing in tab- tobacco companies, um, alcohol. alcohol, weapons, if I can say that. Yes, is that the riba right? Interest. Riba interest. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're opening up the market to help people like our Muslim community to actually start investing as well. Um, and wouldn't you say that if there's anybody listening to this podcast and you, there's a particular fund you want to see on the platform, if you send it to us, we'll look at it and we'll decide whether it's worth holding. But it's open. We're happy to provide it. Absolutely. With a caveat, as long as it's legal in Kenya. Yes. Because I know someone is going to reach out with cannabis. Uh-huh. We'll have to have it, but yeah. in Kenya, it's not. Cannabis is illegal. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay, Rats. Social media is super active. Men multiple channels. I mean, here we have a podcast. It will be on whichever channel is going to be hosted on. Uh, we have all these streaming sites. We're busy, tech-wise, right? There's a lot being tossed away. Yeah. Now, I'm tying you to something in the past that did not happen. When we were in school, and you mentioned this in the first podcast, we're not taught no. about financial matters. We're not financially savvy, all right? How does Ndovu address this? Like, there's a huge need for information, not disinformation. Yeah. Or what uh, Donald Trump used to call fake news. <laughs> <laughs> we need legit news here. Legit news, yeah. Legit news. How is Ndro- Ndovo addressing this? How, how have you positioned yeah. from your side? So I hear you. Yeah. Guess what? There's so much information fatigue. Like, yes. we've just been thrown information, information, information. What's useful? What can I actually action? Yes. Oh, my God, I've read so much. What do I do in theory? What do I do in practicality? Yeah. Oh, I'm tired already. Forget it. It's a problem for another day. Forget it. I think that's what I would do. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> you know, because uh-huh. that's the reality. There's just so much information being thrown at us. Yeah. So what Dovu is doing actually is very much focusing on easily, ac- easily understandable information that can be actioned. Okay. And yes, again, we're here creating a podcast that on financial and money, and there's probably a million other podcasts doing the same thing. What we're trying to do with financials is actually make it more relatable. And there is a big gap in the market, especially in Kenya, yeah. in terms of the information that's available. Traditionally, a lot of finance experts like to speak in financial language, so it's more... Jargon. Yeah. Jargon, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's they sound smart. Uh, for Dover, the focus really is financial education, but financial education for the layman man. Um, so what we've been focusing on is creating content on our Endovo Academy that really relates to the end user by giving examples and making it relatable. We also have a partnership with Saudi Soul that is helping us communicate with the youth the importance of ownership. So how do you own international companies? Yeah, yeah. I mean, seated here, I'm like, huh? How yeah. do I do it? How do I do it? Yeah. But through the Dovu app, you know, we give you not just access to local market, which already existed anyways. Yeah. Is that something new we're doing? Yes. We're mm-hmm. making it easy to mm-hmm. do it through the phone. But how do you now own global companies? Yeah. And that's the value that we really bring. And you can do that through the comfort of your home, like I mentioned. You get ownership in, in the brands that you know, that you love, and you use. On a regular basis. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Uh, We've, we've touched a lot around time, right? Time, yeah. time, time, time. I think many of the listeners now would like to know uh, about the cost. How much is it going to cost? It's a really <laughs> good question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so I'm just going to talk about my previous uh, past. So especially when you're you know working abroad, things have become a lot more accessible in terms of fees. So if you're in the UK, you know, traditionally you're not paying more than... Um, anywhere from 0.5% to 1% okay. um, on a fund, just generally. But that price competition, like the pri- the need to bring down prices to make it more accessible to, to individuals, yeah. hasn't really hit Kenya. And so when we set up Dovu, that was my one number one thing. I said, it's unfair for people to be paying so much in order to access investments. That's actually unfair. Yeah. Um, so at Dovu, I can confidently say that we are the most competitive platform that provides access to financial markets locally and globally what are some of the fees can, so, you, can i tie you down and you mention you can, like you can. this is the amount yeah so um if you were to invest a thousand bob 
we would charge you one bob. So in simple terms, yeah. we would charge you one bob. And if you put that into an example, if you went to other institutions, they would charge you five bob. Okay. So five bob, one bob doesn't sound a lot, but when you're investing significant amounts of money, yeah. and like we mentioned, you have to become disciplined at investing. Absolutely. So soon you're going to become a super investor. You will have a lot of money. And in the long term, that one bob to five bob difference makes a huge, huge impact. Yes. So even before you even look to at investing, that's something that you should look at with all providers to say who is most competitive uh, within this space. Yeah. Um, and we've definitely kept our prices very competitive. Where you focus when you stated the one and the five, it's super interesting because if you think about it, there is, by bringing down the cost, it's like the investor is saving four bob more. Yeah. That previously was just going, now you're investing it. Exactly. And then with power of compounding. Ay, ay, ay. Exactly. <laughs> Show super me the money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Rads. Uh, it's been super interesting today chatting about time, time in the market, uh, excellent banter around time. Yeah. Uh, to all our listeners, in case you have any queries regarding what we have on the platform, uh, do you have any special request, any needs, please reach out to us, support at ndovu.co.co. Please remember that, not .com, not .co.k, dovu.co. I'm the Chief Thinker. And I'm the Super Striker. And we are out.